Howdy, April Preco. This is the third video I'm making today. Um, and on this one, I, I sort of graphed this one by hand, but it looks kind of terrible. So I'm going to send you to Desmos to see what that graph really looks like. Um, and then, and I've kind of already talked about that type of graph in a previous video when we went to Desmos down here. Okay, so now we need to look at what happens when we have something like um, y equals 3 cosine 2 theta. So I graphed that, um, and I was making a video, and then they came on over the announcements. So anyway, here we go. Um, the period would be pi, so it's going to have two complete periods by 2 pi. And so the very first point that I want to graph has a theta of 0 and a radius of 3. I'm working on saying that properly. I keep trying to say the wrong thing. So it's here. And then we get at, at, um, at pi over 2, what, well, okay, so let's see. At pi over 4, we're back to 0. So what does it do? So it's going to come around, and then by pi over 4, we're at 0. So it's going to kind of come out. Let's see if I can see and go something. Oh, no, not that. Come on. It's going to come something like this. And then we get at pi over 2, we're going to be at negative 3. So pi over 2, negative 3 means we're 1, 2, we're down here. And so then we kind of curve away and come this way. And then what happens? We get um, back to 0 at 3 pi. This is 3 pi over 4. And so we kind of curve out and get back to 0 here at 3 pi over 4. And then at pi, we are at 3. So we're at, I can't see. One, two, three. So then we kind of curve out and around and get to here-ish. Um, and then by three pi over two, we're at negative three, which means that we are at three pi over two, which sends us down this way, but we have to turn around and go negative. So that's one, two, three. Okay, and the whole reason, so then we curve through the, or the pole, we get back to here, um, so maybe I should have written start right here, and then we're going this way, 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 and then what happens? Well, we have to, where was that? That was, that was pi over, that was here, pi over, three pi over two, and we have to get back to the origin, and then we have to get back up two pi, we're back to where we started, and so it kind of curves around here and goes something like this, and so, um, all right. Thing is going something like that. And this is the whole reason I wanted to graph this by hand. So you can see we're starting here, and you can see where we have the path that we took. Okay, if I come to Desmos, um, let's come back to the one with, with roses and turn off this. The roses one, why do I have, oh, okay, I was giving different variables. Um, let's make that something bigger we can see. Let's say six, that's a great number. What happens here with, this was cosine, what did I just graph? Cosine, oh good, okay. <laughs> um, if I graph cosine, notice that this petal has a length from the very center, it comes all the way out to six. And it has, um, when we, so it's the length of the petal was that, that value, the, the, the um, constant out in front. And then it, we had this two theta, which actually gave us four petals. Um, and so we're going to look at that in just a second. Actually, I'll do that now while I'm thinking about it. Watch what happens if I give this um, a value of four. Now I still have that same, I still have the same length, length petal. It was still, of, it has a length of six. Um, but now there are um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are, when, when that value inside, maybe um, call it A, call it B, when that value is even, we're going to have twice as many whoa, petals as, um, as that number is. So say six, we should have 12 petals. You can pause the video and count. I'm not going to. Um, if I have um, four, it should have eight petals. If I have 20, it should have, <laughs> pause the video, go ahead and count. There should be 40 petals, but ain't nobody got time for that. Um, so it has twice as many. Now notice in just a second, we're going to look at what happens when we get an odd number. Now when I have an odd number, I have exactly the same number of petals. So when I have, when that's seven, I have seven petals. When it's nine, I have nine petals, etc. When it's three, we had three petals. Okay, now the other thing that's important with this is that when it's cosine, it does have a point here. So like we have, um, and I, I've talked about this in some of the other videos, but basically your cosine curve 
is going to have that f of 0 is equal to 3 or whatever. So f of 0 is going to equal this a value. So let me come down um, here for just a second. Uh, which variable determines the number of petals? The way that I wrote this, b. Um, do all values behave the same? No. Um, when b is even, we have 2b, not 2b, <laughs> 2b or not 2b? Okay, we have twice this number of b, uh, we have 2b petals, and um, when b when b is odd, comma, we have b petals. Okay, which variable determines the length of an individual petal? That's a. Okay, and in either context. Okay, how do roses differ when using sine versus cosine? Okay, so with cosine, that's where we have g of 0 is going to be equal to a. Whereas um, uh, g of, well, pi over 2 times anything. Anyway, there's other things where we, we get to the pole in a different way. The sine, um, if I look at f of 0... I'm going to plug in, if I have a times sine of b times 0, that's so funny, here's an extra set of parentheses so we see what's happening. What is sine of 0? Well, sine of 0 is equal to 0, so this is a times 0 is just 0. Okay, so the um, you won't have a petal, let's see, let's come to Desmos. Um, we on Desmos right here. Notice we've got this point where at, where our, our when our theta is zero, we had a point there. But when I turn this one off and turn on a, a sine one, um, okay, let's change. Okay, let's make that. Uh, oh, well, look what happens when um, when it's not a whole number. All kinds of crazy things. Let's do four. Okay, notice sine doesn't have anything here. Um, its first petal is going to be rotated a little bit off of that x-axis. So, it still has symmetry with the x-axis. That's neither here nor there. Um, hopefully, that was helpful. Did I answer every question on here? Um, how do roses differ when using sine versus cosine? Um, the, basically, the cosine one is going to have a point, it's going to have a petal that's kind of centered around either this side or this side, depending on if it's positive or negative and how many petals and all that kind of stuff. And signs are going to be a little bit shifted off from that. So, hopefully, that made sense. Um, this one is going to have three petals. The length of the petals is, it will be four. Um, and I don't feel like doing this on the video. So, um, go to Desmos <laughs> and see what that looks like. Um, I mean, but it is important that we know where to start and which way we're going and how far we've gotten to different things. But I have more to help us practice that idea coming up. All right. Good luck. Go study, practice, subscribe, all those things.